What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel. So today we are reviewing the MacBook Pro 16 inch that we unboxed just three weeks ago. So this is how I think the MacBook Pro is after three weeks of intense usage. So let's get started. So let's start by talking about the design. The first thing we get to know about the device when you open it up and it is pretty much similar to what Apple has been using for the past couple of years. It is same unibody design, not upgradable by user. So remember to choose the specifications when you're buying the laptop. And uh, pretty much similar things, the trackpad, a huge trackpad, the best on the market right now. A better keyboard which we'll be, to uh, we'll be talking later in the video and the trackpad as well and the speakers as well but overall the design has been similar for past couple of years for Apple and it is actually pretty good the unibody design it's sleek it's comfortable to hold it's not that heavy it's really uh, good when carrying and overall it's really good and then moving on to what we know is the second thing we use on a laptop is basically the keyboard. So now uh, for past couple of years, Apple was using the butterfly keyboard on most of its devices, most of the laptops and uh, they finally made the switch to back to the scissor keyboard. The scissor keyboard was first last used in the MacBook Air in 2015. It changed to butterfly after that in the uh, MacBook 12 inch that is not actually being sold. It was discontinued by Apple. but they knew that it had a lot of issues with the keyboard and people were getting back-to-back -back problems with the keyboard so they finally listened to the user base kudos on that apple and they got back to the scissor keyboard which is a lot reliable a bit better when typing as compared to the butterfly it's not that tactile and it's not that uh, what you say has a uh, sound to it but it's really comfortable, it's really good, it's good on typing. I have used the scissor keyboard on MacBook Air, that was the last laptop that actually used the scissor keyboard before the 16 inch MacBook and it's actually better than that. More on the laptop, uh, uh, this uh, the 16 inch actually uh, switched back to having a separate escape free from the touch bar. It is a physical key for the typer, uh, for the people who are typing most of their time on the laptop. It's a pretty big thing honestly, but I don't uh, actually use escape key much because I uh, prefer to use a physical keyboard like external keyboard, but it is a big thing for uh, the people typing on the laptop. Other than that, the touch ID was actually separated from the touch bar as well. And uh, honestly, that is a good move because it is not as shiny as it was on the previous models. It is. It has a similar touch there as compared to the like the touch bar. It is sim quite similar for that thing. And being separate, you don't have to see where you're touching. You can just feel it and touch the touch bar when you are prompted with passwords and all. Moving on, the trackpad was actually uh, switched to the large trackpad a long time ago by Apple. It was first introduced on the MacBook Pro 15.6 inch couple of years ago, like two to three years ago, I don't remember the exact date. And it has been the best in the industry. It is uh, really good at tracking. The It's smooth, really smooth. It is actually can be used for designing if you are not actually doing it professionally, if you are doing casual editing, you can actually use the trackpad itself. And it is so big, you get the room to you know, uh, move freely on the screen and you don't have to just uh, touch back and forth again and again. After that, what was really astonishing on the laptop were the speakers. By far, the best speakers on the market, hands down. I have used a couple of laptops. I am a university student, so I get to meet a lot of people out there with different laptops and none of them has so good of a speaker. It has six speakers with two subwoofers and Apple actually changed the, they made the design in such a way that the thumb of the woofer, the vibrations are minimized and you still get the feeling. And when you're using the laptop within your laps, basically what's laptop, that is the maximum thing you're gonna be using it like. It is incredible. It 
it's amazing and then what we come to the display and it's not the brightest of the displays it's not the highest resolution in the market but honestly with a uh, DCI-P3 for the people out there who are designers who are creators and uh, color range is a big thing for you this thing is not gonna disappoint you at all 91% Adobe RGB uh, color range and uh, obviously 100% sRGB is covered in that it is color accurate one of the best colors out there it is claimed by Apple that it goes up to 500 nits but according to today's runs by uh, run by other people on the YouTube and other reviewers it goes up to 469 I don't have the capabilities to check the nits going the brightest but it is really good honestly moving on from uh, the physical aspects of the laptop we go into what's inside of this the maximum you can go up till is an i9 processor 9980hk that goes up to 5 GHz uh, when turbo boost and due to the really good cooling system of this laptop it, re it's, it remains cool and doesn't throttle so much it's actually really really sustains that 5 GHz turbo boost it goes up to 5 gigahertz when you throttle it and it stays there for a long time a long long time much longer than 15.6 the previous version used to other than that this can go up to 64 gigs of ram this is the model which has it and uh, 5500m uh, it's the amd radeon 5500m equivalent to nvidia 1650 i guess and it's really good it's really really good i uh, normally edit uh, a 4k footage this video will be edited on this in full resolution and there's no frame drops zero it renders them it exports them and it does the job and it can do most of the things you will throw at it simultaneously without throttling at all it is really good but remember to choose the specifications when you're buying the laptop because you can't upgrade it yourself. Everything is soldered onto the motherboard and the thing you buy is what you're gonna get. You can't upgrade it. That's it. So there's that. After that, what you have is the benchmarks. I run the test and actually compared it to the most used laptops and the most powerful laptops on the market and the uh, and the previous macbook 15.6 generation which had some uh, uh, heat throttling and uh, these are the results i found moving on what i actually wanted to do with the review video and what i'm gonna do with further reviews is tell you if you should buy this laptop not buy this laptop what specifications you get and uh, so should you buy it probably that depends actually that depends on what you're using if you're using it for professional stuff you're video editing and uh, you're making using uh, after effects or any other heavy adobe softwares for everyday users and you have a really robust offers usage Sure, go for it. If you are into Mac systems, you have an Apple environment and uh, you actually want to uh, invest into a laptop, this thing won't disappoint at all. Obviously, if you don't want a Mac and you want Windows laptop, you want into a Windows environment, then yes, there are other options, a lot of them actually. But to remember the people I have heard that this th thing can be made in uh, a lot lower budget than this thing costs actually it can be but that will be a desktop it is not portable you can take you can't take it anywhere else and it is not that easy for like it is not that good of a thing to buy a desktop custom desktop and a laptop separately just because you want to save money because you're going to be shifting files a lot if you're doing a lot of things at time so i'll probably suggest to buy a laptop a powerful one if you are at it if it takes a couple of more bucks a couple of hundred more a couple even if it takes thousands of dollars a bit of more if you are like making a desktop it's gonna cost you around 
a good a good really good desktop it's going to cost you around 15 to 2000 dollars if you are into it to make it the best possible thing you want and this thing is co- will cost around 6000 dollars that's a lot of difference that a lot of difference but what you will get is you will have the portability you will have the easiness and uh, obviously there are windows laptops that are much cheaper and perform significantly just on par with this but if you get into a detailed uh, comparison exact same specifications as this one uh, i actually compared those and a laptop from dell actually cost almost similar to this it this thing cost like $6000 and actually i'm talking in 6000 canadian dollars it's like 4500 us dollars or around 3.3 lakhs in indian rupee so that laptop from dell costs around uh, 3 lakhs after discounts and all that 3 lakhs will be around exact same amount like this but obviously that will be a window and uh, a window environment and it won't be uh, obviously it will be running uh, adobe a uh, premier pro and other adobe softwares it can't run final cut pro if you are into final cut pro and its environment obviously uh, what final cut pro is better at is rendering and exporting files it's a lot faster you can go on other youtube channels and compare them because i don't have the means obviously so if you are into mac yes go for it you can buy this you can go for a cheaper version if you don't want like 64 gigs of ram and 2 tb ssd you can go for a lower uh, specification or you can go into windows environment no doubt but if you really want a macbook and really powerful consider it an investment then sure you should buy it otherwise you have other options obviously thanks a lot for watching the video this will be our review of macbook pro 16 inch 2019 model don't forget to subscribe to the channel like the video and uh, follow us on facebook at gizmosity on instagram at tech.gizmosity we post regular updates there and we are also active on twitter gizmosity1 so thanks a lot for video keep supporting keep watching have a nice day